Hello, wonderful support specialists and coordinators. I wanted to share a few best practices regarding what you should enter into the reading tab in your individual classes. What you enter into the reading tab plays a big role in helping the teachers and the students with the reading requirement of seminary. As you watch this video, please hit pause along the way to follow along the same steps. To do this, first off, I have opened up several tabs on my browser to help with this project. First off, I've gone to the Doctrine and Covenants and Church History Study Guide for Home Study seminary student. And if you notice right here, I have found a reading chart that I've opened up in this tab. So this is a reading chart. Now back here on this page, if you click right here, you can click on download the text and you can download the PDF of this book and it's a little bit easier to read and I've put in this tab that PDF, it's a little bit easier to read the reading chart there. In this tab, I have opened up to the Doctrine and Covenants, and in this tab, I have opened up to the Pearl of Great Price. So here I am back in Wise, and the first thing that we might be tempted to do is hit Defaults. And once you're here on Defaults, if you hit Apply, you're going to add 76 different reading assignments for the students and the teacher to mark off for every individual student. Now it's helpful because there's links and everything is ready there, but I wanted to show you something else that has really helped students and teachers cut down on administrative time and help them track their reading in a meaningful way. So I would not use the defaults. Let's go ahead and add our first one. So here I am, I'm going to go to this tab where my reading chart is. And in this reading chart, there are 32 separate units according to the home study schedule. So if I take that, I divide it in two, I have 16 reading assignments for each semester. So I have the right amount of reading for each week. I recognize there's more than 16 weeks in a semester usually, but it's not too many and it allows time for Thanksgiving or whatever holidays there might be. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this text right here. And I'm gonna come back to um, Wise and under title I'm gonna hit a number one and then I'm gonna paste that in there and then I'm going to put a comma and then Dr. Covenants one now it's asking for a URL or a link the links I will show you after I walk you through the Y side of things what it looks like on the new LDS Seminary Institute app for teachers parents and students as well as my seminary I'm gonna go ahead and go up here to my Doctrine and Covenants tab and here I have a link to the introduction I'm going to right click on that link, hit copy link address, go back to WISE, and I'm going to paste that link there. Now I can only put in one link per reading that I add, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. So here is my first link. If I click on that, it will take me to Doctrine and Covenants uh, introduction, not to section one. Now if you want to make multiple links for each one, you can, but I think it's easier for the teachers to train the students that you need to read everything listed there. So the first link will take them to the first assigned reading of that grouping and then they'll need to navigate to Doctrine and Covenants 1 to complete the reading. Let's go ahead and add another. Click on add. I'm going to come up here to my reading chart. I can look at this one and in this case they're supposed to read a lot of Joseph Smith history and section two. Go back to Y's, I'm gonna hit two. I'm gonna paste in that and then a comma and then, so I've entered in that. Now I'm going to go uh, to the link for Joseph Smith History. And that is in the Pearl of Great Price. So here at Joseph Smith History, I'm gonna right click, copy the link address, come back to Y's and paste it in. And I'm gonna hit save. So I've entered these first two, I'll do one more real quick. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go to my reading chart, whichever one you'd like. And in this case, I have DNC 3, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, and Joseph Smith History. So I'm going to come back here and type in 3, and then I'll type in what I need to. So I've typed in all of this information, and you can see that I need to link to Doctrine and Covenants 3, because that's the only thing I can link to in this. So I need to go back to Doctrine and Covenants. I need to click on the sections, and I can right-click on the number 3 for section 3 and copy the link address and paste it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the rest of the readings. So I've entered in all of the readings here. Now, I recognize this might take a while to do this, but once you do it once, you don't need to do it again. You can copy what you've done here to any other class 
in the program you're currently working in or any other class to any other programs that you're assigned to oversee. I'm going to go ahead and hit export readings and then it will bring you to this page. Now if I want to copy these readings to the other classes, you click on that button and hit export readings. You have to do one class at a time. Once you've added those to all the classes within this program, you can change programs by clicking on this drop down here. It will bring up the other programs you have access to. Once you do that, it's going to make the year and the term go blank. So you'll need to se select the correct year and the correct term, and then those classes should appear. If there's no classes appearing, they haven't been entered in. So you need to create the classes before you want to add those readings to those classes. I want to show you now what it looks like on the LDS Seminary and Institute app because of the work that we've gone to to help the teachers and the students with tracking and helping them get credit for reading. So here I am on my phone and I've gone to the App Store and I've looked up for LDS Seminary and Institute. You can see it comes up there and I'm going to go ahead and open it since I've downloaded it already. I'm going to go ahead and open it from the point of view of a student. When a student logs in, this is what they will see. And you can see under readings right here, I'm going to touch on that. And it brings up all of the readings that have been put into WISE by the support specialist. To mark it off, the students will just touch on the circles as they complete those. The completion percentage updates up above. Now, the links, why did we put them in? So if I, as a student, am here, I can touch on the actual reading and it will bring me to the web browser version of the scripture. So to that link to Introduction to the Doctrine and Covenants. Again, we've only put links to the first one. So for example, for reading number four, it will take me to Doctrine and Covenants section eight. Now what I haven't talked about is at the beginning of the year, each teacher will need to work closely with either a ward or a state clerk or you as the support specialist to really help the students get to their username and password to where they can log in successfully. I found that teenagers like to create a new account if they can't log in. The problem is their account needs to be tied to their membership in order for things to work for them. A practice that was successful when I was teaching seminary was that on Fridays, I would say, okay, everyone, we need to log in to my seminary or open your app and I need you to mark your progress from reading from this past week. I would also inform the students that I will be sending an email to mom and dad reminding them to log into the app or my seminary to check on their progress. And so once a week they are to mark it. I can see from the teacher side how far along they are and if they have made any progress and I can also invite parents to log in to check progress as well. But having students have to mark this once a week or at least 16 times throughout the semester provide good checkpoints along the way to help them stay caught up or recognize where they need to be. So I've logged in here as a teacher. When you log in for the first time as a teacher, you'll need to set up a passcode like you do in LDS tools to keep private data safe. So I have clicked on readings here <clears throat> at the top. I can mark off an individual student reading here by just clicking on the circles. Additionally, I can click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and it brings up the option to mark all readings done. And that will go ahead and mark all of the readings as complete for this particular unit. Now, if you notice the small drop down arrow here allows me to change in between. So that was the first one. And I can go to the second one and mark all reading as done and so on if I need to mark them for the students. If they don't have a device or they, they're never able to log in, the teacher can go ahead and log those things in. The teacher can go ahead and mark those things off, but we really want to give parents, and especially the students ownership, to help them know their own progress throughout the semester with regard to reading. I've logged in here as a parent and I can see my two children that are enrolled in seminary. I'm going to go ahead and click on one of them. And as I come to this page, first it gives me the reading, then their attendance percentage, their assessment score. Let's go ahead and look at readings. So like the students see, parents can see where they're at, and parents can also mark off reading for their students as well. I've logged in as a student here at myseminary.lds.org. Some students might not want to download the app. Um, they might not be allowed to because of restrictions. Um, but they can still access 
it if they can access a web browser on their device. And so myseminary.lds.org, they'll log in with their LDS account. We can see the things that are available here. I'm going to click on readings because that's what we're talking about. I'm clicking on view details. It will bring up those 16 readings that we've put in in WISE and they can go ahead and mark them off here. The parent view is exactly the same. There is no teacher view for myseminary.lds.org. There is a teacher view in WISE, obviously, as well as the LDS Seminaries and Institutes app. I hope that these few suggestions and being able to see it from the point of view of the teacher and the student, you can understand how this will assist them in the administrative side and encouraging and helping them check in frequently so that they complete the reading for the course so they get credit for seminary.